Hello everyone, another episode, Red Devil's Talk, me your host, Session, and of course, we will be speaking about the 3-1 loss to Wrexham, where basically our academy players played. And of course, we'll be speaking about Hoyland yet again, we'll be speaking about Sofian Amrabat, and we'll be definitely doing a preview for the match against Real Madrid, and that is a much more bigger match than the Wrexham one. Self-explanatory at that. If you're new here, subscribe please, drop a like and hit the notification bell so that you know exactly when I do upload videos. We talk all things Manchester United. So, let's get into it. A 3-1 loss to Wrexham. It of course shows Man United 1, Wrexham 3. But if you actually do know who was playing, it was our academy players. And it was more a lesson for them than anything else. They had the technical ability, don't get me wrong, they are, shall I say, potential quality players. But on a physical level, on a professional level, they simply cannot compete. And it was clear to see that after the first few minutes, when they were spreading the ball around and playing with beautiful patterns, there wasn't an end product. And that was the difference. You see, the players of Wrexham basically just won the national conference, they have motivation, you know, their owners are watching, it's Manchester United, if not, you know, the big players, but the name still stands, and they basically looked at it as an opportunity to show off, in a sense, but not in a bad way, but in a sense of showing that they are actually the professionals, considering their ages, considering their physicality, physical, but also on a mental level, it was kind of clear to see that they probably would win and get their goals. And perhaps here and there, we could and should have done better. But as I said, it's the academy players. You cannot expect much from players who haven't really set foot in the first team or in a first team setup, you know, competitive game and all that. And some of the players that I took notice of was Alvaro Fernandez and Hannibal Mabry. And I think the two of them are ready for first team football. And Alvaro Fernandez, in my opinion, and Hannibal Mabry should perhaps get a loan in the Premier League. You know, I think Hannibal is now at that point where he can go and challenge himself. His loan at Birmingham wasn't that good. And it was in the Championship yet again. And if he can get a loan in the Premier League, we can then assess, and then Ten Hag can then assess to see whether he actually can be part of the first team in the future. Because he, he's got the tenacity, he's got the drive, he's got the little bite about him, and he has the technical ability. I mean, we saw him run the game, we saw him, you know, find himself in good spaces, play along the lines, you know, and actually find his teammates quite well and hold on to the ball, you know, in good moments. But there is still a lot for him to improve upon. And I think that a loan into the Premier League for another team that can perhaps give him more game time and give him that Premier League experience that he needs, I think then we can look at perhaps integrating him into the team as the future goes on, or is still to come, sorry. On the other hand, for Alvaro Fernandez, a top-class left back. I mean, we've seen him play in the past two games and he has done quite well when played. And against Wrexham, he once again showed that he is a level above most of the academy players that there are. Not because of his experience when he went out on loan, but mainly because how he developed while he was out on loan. And therefore, just like Hannibal, I feel that he should be looking to find a Premier League loan to give him Premier League experience. And then I definitely feel he can be part of the first team in the future. And he himself has a task to either show himself, like Hannibal, who has showed a bit of promise and drive to the point that there's a fire inside him that he wants to break into the first team this season already. Now, whether that happens or not, it all depends on himself and Eric Ten Hag and what the decision is around him. But it's good to see that there are young players who have the drive to be part of the first team and to, you know, work their way into the first team. And that is what Ten Hag wants to see. He definitely wants to see 
players, young players especially, show their quality and show that they can be better than some players in the first team. So, I don't really want to speak too much about the game against Wrexham because as I said, it was a lesson for our academy players and it is a professional team that they played against and a much more rugged team than a team that will hold possession and try to, you know, play on a press, etc. They basically played an old school game, playing the ball to the first man up front and ensuring that they, you know, win the second ball and go from there. It was a pure old school, you know, lower league type of football and against a team with academy players who are not on a physical level there yet, it was clear to see that our academy players, some of them are not good enough for the professional setup. And it's not their fault. It's basically showed that our owners, once again, did not pay attention to the academy and exactly how it needed to be developed in order for us to have academy players that can come into the first team and that can compete against other professional teams regardless of age. So those are the positives I looked at in the game against Wrexham. So I think fair enough, you know, Alvaro Fernandez, Annabelle Mabry, Isaac Hansen adding to a certain extent are players that are knocking on the door of the first team and want an opportunity to show themselves. So on to transfer news now and a bit on Hoyland as we've spoken about him quite a lot. We know that he is the striker that we are focusing on, the striker that Ten Hag wants. And it has been reported by Fabrizio that this is crucial days now. Today, tomorrow, Friday and the weekend, it is said that we and Atalanta want to wrap up the deal and we as United want to at least pay between 60 to 70 million euros with add-ons. Now, that is obviously less in pounds and you have to look at it in the mindset of that it's the add-ons that is going to ensure that we get this deal done. You cannot go and put a 70 million cash price tag on a player who hasn't shown that ability. Potential is there, as I've said in previous videos, but we need to be realistic on the price. And I think this deal will get done as per Fabrizio has said. And PSG, even though they are in his camp, even though they've offered him more money as per Di Marzio, he still has said that he wants to be a Manchester United player. So that in itself is something good. And that's why I want to speak about Sofian Amrabat as well, because he was also reported by Alfredo Padula to have rejected Liverpool. So he also wants Manchester United. And part of the reason, of course, is because he played under Ten Hag at FC Utrecht. But again, another player who wants to come to Manchester United, Casemiro was the same, Martinez the same, Anthony as well. Players who want and had the urge and the desire to play for Manchester United. And those are the type of characters that Ten Hag wants to bring into the dressing room and into the team. Players who want to play for the club. Not players who come here for a payday and want to live the high life and be part of the branding, etc. But players who want to play, to win, to be part of a era that is successful in a footballing sense. It is more important for us to focus on the fact that these players want to be part of the future. And Ten Hag himself said that last summer there was a bit of a doubt by players who they wanted to sign. But this summer, this transfer window, they see the ambition, they see the direction that we are going into and definitely want to join the club. So, well and potentially, sorry, potentially done by this weekend as per Fabrizio in terms of full agreement and you know, the deal being here we go. And Sofian Amrabat also has agreed personal terms with us as per Alfredo Padula. And here's another thing. He's not training with Fiorentina. He's training on his own. So he is waiting perhaps for a transfer. So it's good to see that we're working on both deals. But I do believe that we are going to focus on Hoyland first, get that deal sorted and done. And then after... McTominay or Fred might be leaving, then we can look to go and make an offer for Sofian Amrabat. And McTominay and Fred are for sale. The likes of West Ham, Fulham, etc. are looking at them. 
So hopefully we get to sell one of them and then we can get that other midfielder in, in Sofian Amrabat, which is another defensive minded midfielder that can play box to box, that is quite versatile in midfield and would be a huge asset to Ten Hag tactically, but also beneficial to the team as a whole. Real Madrid. Now, again, preseason is all about match fitness, match rhythm, and that is and will always remain the most important thing. But to test ourselves against a team that we all know has always had and does have quality players is good. It will be good to see where we rank ourselves and how far we have progressed. And Real Madrid is a very, very, very strong test for us. And it will be interesting to see what we're going to be focusing on. Will it be our patterns of play? Or will it be our finishing? Will it be our defensive structure? Or everything as a whole? So the game itself will have goals. I am sure of that because of the quality that will be on display. But we do not need to focus on the result. We do not need to focus on the amount of goals that could, can potentially be scored or not scored. It is the performances. It is the patterns. That is what we need to focus on. We know that we definitely will have the opportunity to see Andre Onana. And that I am excited about because surely he can get at least 45 minutes, whether the first or the second half. But I'm sure that he will be making his debut tonight. Not his official debut, you know, in the Premier League and all that. But a debut nonetheless. And it will be exciting to see how he plays with the team, how he integrates into the team, and how the team plays from the back with him. And how we are able to now have better play from the back and more comfortability on the ball. And no panic in the sense of, oh, we can't pass it to the back because, you know, the gear might clear it or, you know, might make a mistake. I think there will be a sense of confidence now in playing the ball out from the back and having that comfortability, as I said before, to play the ball to Onana and then receive it back in space. So a very, very good technical and tactical game we might see tonight. It is a friendly, but players, coaches have this mindset, especially players and coaches of top quality, world-class level. They have the mindset of focusing on the smaller details in these particular friendlies and they don't care about the results. You know, I think it will be important to see how we progress, how a midfield of Mount Fernandez and Casemiro can perhaps work against tougher opposition with a better quality midfield like Real Madrid. It will be important for me personally and also for you to see exactly how Kobe Mainu plays against the likes of Jude Bellingham, Chuamini, Kamavinga, Modric, Kroos, etc. Those are midfielders that have much more experience than him and it will be interesting to see how he raises his levels to play against some of these world-class midfielders. You know, us having to try and break through their defense, you know, that will be a task for us. The way we try to play through them, the way we try to hold on to the ball, I think Ten Hag focuses on position. And if we are able to keep position against the likes of Real Madrid, against a Bayern Munich, Barcelona, you know, Manchester City, Liverpool, etc., these big teams in these big games, it does give us a much better opportunity to win if we are able to go to their home stadiums and at Old Trafford and hold the ball and play with a sense of confidence where we are in control, not a sense of counter-attack. Now, of course, we are very good in transition. We've seen it in plenty of games before and we are becoming much more better in transitioning from defense to attack quickly. I mean, that is part of the United way, quick counter-attacks. But I think they're now going to be a total footballing team that in position can be threatening and out of position can also be threatening. Thus, being difficult to beat and a nightmare to play against. So I'm excited about the Real Madrid game and I feel that we're going to see a good game. As I said, results don't matter. It is the finer details and the match fitness and sharpness that we will be focusing on. So transfer news as we end. Fabrizio reporting that Wayland could potentially be done by this weekend in terms of an agreement with the fee with Fiorentina. Sofian Amrabat 
by Alfredo Padula reporting that he hasn't been training with Fiorentina, has agreed personal terms with us, rejected Liverpool and is the target for Ten Hag once Fred or McTominay leaves the club. Subscribe to the channel, drop a like, hit the notification bell. See you in the next one. Bye-bye, Red Devils.